This is the early part of the fight. All the angler needs to be doing right now is just get in line. Get in line when the captain runs up on the fish. Hold tight when it's running away from you. Fish is still pretty far away from the boat. There's no need to put a lot of pressure on the fish. You're going to conserve your energy for later on in the fight. It's important that the clicker's on right now. It's the only way the captain knows exactly what's going on in the back of the boat. He can hear when the line's going out. He can hear when the angler's frantically trying to bring in line and move the boat forward. So the clicker stays on unless the captain says otherwise. While we're watching the angler, Steve Pomo, settle into this fish, let me tell you a little something about this fishery. This is Prince Edward Island in the fall. We're fishing with the Bruce brothers and Captain Troy Bruce. We've been doing this for a lot of years. In my opinion, this is the ultimate challenge on stand-up gear. Everything has to be right. Your gear, your technique, the captain, and hopefully the fish are going to cooperate as well. Troy said he saw it pick up the bait. It was the biggest fish he ever saw in his life. <laughs> so you may not want to pound it right away. <laughs> over the years, we've worked hard to refine our gear. So let's go over what we use. Let's start off with the Black Magic back brace and plate. That plate's an XL wide. It's really important that it's an XL wide because it's hung relatively low on your body, right above your knees, and the normal width will actually slip off one side or the other when you spread your legs too far apart. And now, the most important part are the gloves. You're gonna notice Steve's wearing two different gloves. On his right hand is a glove that's just used to stop him from getting blistered when turning the handle. The left glove is critical. It's leather. It can only be leather. Don't use anything but leather. That glove is used to put pressure on the reel at critical times, and oftentimes it's holding the line while the fish is running out. And if that happens with a synthetic glove, the glove is just going to melt. You'll get burned. Bits of the glove will get on the line. It's a disaster. The goal at this point in the fight is to get the fish as close as possible to the boat until it begins to circle while using as little as your own energy as possible. Right now, Steve's got a little bit of bend in his waist. He's mostly pivoting from his knees. But as the fight goes on, he's going to straighten out. He's going to lay back a little more and then move his pivot point closer and closer to his knees and ankles. As you lean back further and shift your pivot point to your ankles and knees, you get in a position where you can exert maximum pressure on the fish. Steve's done a great job at conserving his energy. Now he's ready for the hard part of the fight and he rears back and all of a sudden we realize we've got a problem. Here's the problem. We're now discovering that this rod is what's called a 13080, which means the bottom of the rod blank is like a 130, but the top unfortunately is only an 80. And we've got an angler who can put an enormous amount of pressure on a fish. He just showed it right there. And what's actually happening is the rod is bending too much. So when the rod bending this much, he's struggling to use the rod to get line. And actually right now he's just stuck trying to control this fish. You see how he's got his glove, his left glove, locked into the reel holding the line in because he's, he's trying to get it into a circle and now trying to control it. But the rod has way, way too much bend. So he's going to suffer this problem and he's going to have to deal with this as this fight goes on. He's not going to get as much help from the rod as he, he would like. And you're going to see how he deals with that in just a bit. Oh, Troy. He's coming under, Troy. So now, Steve's dealing with this fish. Right. It's tight to the boat. It's moving all over the place. And he's trying to make sure that line doesn't go onto the boat. But you see where the rod is. The rod's in a difficult position. And he needs to hold on. So what he's doing is using anything he can on the boat as an advantage, yeah, holding on to the fighting chair, sometimes the gunnel. He's locked in, just he's trying just to control the fish, right but right the once again, this rod's a little right soft. There. You see it bobbing like that because it's slowly ripping line out from under his hand. Can't stop him. He's just trying to get it under control, not trying to let it go on a big exactly. run. Keep its head in the circle. Here we are, just having a seat, watching Stevie fight this fish. Got Tyler who has to worry about minding Stevie. 
and Troy not do much of anything right now. Just check it. Don't do nothing. Just watch somebody else sweat. We usually like to get these fish in in less than an hour, and most of the time we can. But we got some problems here, and Andy has just told us we've hit the one hour mark, and we still have a long way to go. This is a big fish, um, a really big fish. I haven't told you how big it is because I don't want to spoil the surprise at the end of this. But right now, you can see that Steve's trying to do everything he can to get this fish back into the circle and get line on the part of the circle where the fish comes towards the boat and hold line as a part of the circle as the fish goes away from the boat. And here he goes. He actually turned his head, and he's getting some terms now. And now this circle, this whole circle is going to be a lot higher up in the water column. Now, it's really important that no one panics right here because the one part of the circle, the fish is coming at the transom. And your first impulse is to tell the captain to move the boat forward. But it's in a circle. So if you go and try and do that, you'll probably have the boat pull line out of the reel, and everything you gained will be lost. You have a little bit of nerve here and just kind of hang on and only move that boat if you absolutely have to. And then it will slowly come out of the circle. And see the pressure he's putting on the fish. Your rod's starting to come up a little bit. That's as it comes out of that part of the circle. Now, Ken Frazier's a world record holder. Now, this guy is a PI native. These guys basically invented giant tuna fishing. And he said that if you can't get the fish in an hour, you either got to change the angler or change the captain. But... With all due respect, Mr. Yeah, Frazier, yeah, you guys never fine. fought these fish on stand-up. And sometimes on stand-up, you get the right fish, and you're going to spend more than an hour. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Starting to see a little white? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Getting some white now, Stevie. A lot of white on that fish, buddy. Coming back at us. Forward, right? Forward, please. Good, 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 good. 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 That's it. Let it spin. No, we're good. Is he still in here? There we go. Okay, coming out. This is an all-release, sustainable, giant bluefin tuna fishery. You can fight these fish out of the chair with a rod and a gunnel, or you can fight them stand-up. For me, the best connection is fighting them on stand-up. It'll be the hardest thing you ever do while you're fishing. I'm Captain Andy Lacasio, and I hope that you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it.